this uh, image that you see was using the uh, 3D modeling. Again, just to click on it with the extrusion, that's going to show you this uh, part with the um, mapping of the art. It'll show you those sections that show through it. So it's kind of giving you a little bit of a, a heads up. But if you want to keep it out of there and just start from scratch, um, again, this was the piece that was made into a symbol. So you're copying this off and uh, just creating it in a rasterized image. You don't even have to make it a symbol this time. But if you did, then you can actually just click on this uh, symbol and just drag it over to the side here. And there's also this one here, the panel. So those are two symbols that are made. And um, just so you can see it, you can go to Object and take a look at these items down here of Envelope Distort. The top one is making with the uh, warp tool, and that looks somewhat familiar as far as the uh, all the different presets that it has. So you have all these different options that you can try. You can adjust them from within this segment. You can change the vertical and horizontal. Everything that's allow allowable in here, you can modify. There's no really just one square one, but it'll give you that that section. I'll cancel that and go back through the same process and envelope distort. And this time, make with a mesh. The default gives you four, and it gives you four points right there, so I'll click on it. And what happens is that this is the mesh that you have. It connects right to it. The direct selection tool allows you to select these points. If you see them separately, you can kind of get an idea that it bends this. And since I put the default of four and a four, it allows me to grab all these different panels and pieces. I can even grab within the square that is made in the grid, or I can adjust the points, and I can also adjust the handles just like I would a normal uh, edge drawing. If you take a look two handles and go into the pen tool, and if you remember the keystroke, and then it'll allow you to set or reset these points. Now you have all four manipulated into that section. If you click again, <clears throat> you can modify just one of the points as it goes through it and it'll give you that connection so you can kind of see you have a lot of flexibility with this uh, tool but keep in mind all the paths and everything of the uh, initial illustration was duplicated and uh, in this case made into a symbol but uh, rasterizing it makes it a little bit easier to, to get to that point so this one allows you to do that. So I'll delete that one. But you can see what it what it does create, kind of like if this was a crumpled piece of paper. You now have this image <laughs> easily grabbed here. So you can really push and pull this and see how far you can make this. And you can, uh, you can shade this in Illustrator. You can also take it into Photoshop and manipulate some of the uh, tones and shade this so it looks even more kind of a realistic approach to it as a segment. So I'll just kind of throw this one over here and just grab the symbol and put another one down here. And now let's see if I can make it into the box. So very quickly, just going to go to Object and Envelope and again go with the mesh. But instead of using four, just going to click and put, put them at one. So now it's just going right to the edge. And this will take a little bit of manipulating, but you can, with uh, Illustrator and other, other parts of the program, you can adjust it, but let's see if we can change the points. So I'm going to try to put this into a perspective view, a little bit like that. And um, again, see if I can adjust these. Uh, if I just click and drag with this part, it'll drag the corner point in or you can manipulate it as you go. So it resets itself to a corner. If you can see that, kind of a blue line. So I'm clicking and just dragging slightly inward, and it resets it to almost like a corner without the distortion. And that gives me that, that piece. Now, if I wanted to, I can still manipulate these points a little further. And uh, you can see a little bit of curvature, so you can grab those. And, handles that come out of the point to create that shape. And that's all there is to that one. Just grab this guy down here, bring him into this section. 
and again, just kind of going through that envelope uh, to store it. Let me see this section. There's the mesh. It stays with the default. Clicks OK. And here I'll, I'll try a little bit with the uh, rotation tool. If you remember, just by clicking, it sets that point of rotation. So it gives me a little bit of a help starting off. If, if that doesn't work, then you can always just grab it from these points. And again, by having this distortion, it gives you all kinds of opportunities that you can think of for creating some unique uh, kind of location to it. So I'll just see if I can set those back. So it just takes a little, little messing around with the points anchor points, the handles that are connected to them, <clears> that much you build that up. So I'm just going to keep that as a little thicker just to show it to you. And then the final one, I never made a, a bottom panel, so I'm just going to go right to the anchor points of these and make my own perspective there for that piece. And that gives me a pretty good facsimile of this, and I can again adjust the points, put it behind these items. Take a look at the path tool. I can give that a gradient as well. And that gives me this, this selection. And then just grouping this together so it moves, moves to that part. So you can kind of see a little bit of the connection between these two characters and building that up. But then for the last uh, segment, I'll just do one more and again, just try to show it to you with the <clears throat> patterns that you can create something if it's, it calls for it in your design. So if you have a top object, that's, we'll do that light later. But that's just showing you a couple, a couple items. And you can offset it a little bit and preview it that way so you have the selection. And if you have more than one point, you can take the direct selection tool and grab all those points so it makes a little bit more of a curve like that. So pretending this was like maybe in a magazine or a, a page like that, you could create that image and adjust, adjusting the point like that. So it gives you flexibility from uh, Illustrator all the way through it, so you can give yourself an idea like that. So just a couple, couple different ways to show you from making it a 3D model to uh, supplementing it with these different images and like I said you can group these, download them, create them, patterns, symbols, everything you can think of for that part.